Hey, what's up guys? Working on a couple projects this week and thought I would just uh, share some of it. You know, had a chance to grab a few clips uh, here and there and thought I would put it into a video so you guys could kind of see what was going on. Had a friend of mine, Travis McElroy, who also is a True Cut owner, a True Cut CNC table owner from San Antonio, came up for a couple days and helped me out to try to meet a deadline on this project that I sort of signed myself up to. But it was a couple of different projects going on. One is this uh, mini tail roller section here. And there was some really large uh, seven inch DOM tubing that uh, needed to be machined. And so I was able to borrow this massive 1941 Monarch to turn those at the local machine shop. They just let me pay them a little day rate. And actually the guy that owns it's a neighbor of mine. and. I probably could have done it without paying anything, but you know, you don't want to come use somebody's really cool stuff and not at least give them a little bit of money. So I paid him to let me come and machine that and really had a good time uh, learning that machine and, and first time ever running anything that large. So um, anyway, here you see some really uh, big tubing. Well, for me, it's big. Uh, these are in the range of four by six with half inch wall. Um, and as you can see, the, the plans that we're working off here, uh, these are a um, going to be a jib crane that go on the back of service trucks. Like, you know, if you think of like a truck that services big rigs, you know, like those big fleet service trucks, and they got a little crane on the back of them. I believe this one's rated for like a thousand pounds. So, um, so you got these telescoping tubes, and uh, and then there's an upright, and then there's some uh machine parts that go on this as well and you see me back there in the background on the lathe uh machining some 1045 uh chrome plated rod or yeah chrome plated rod and uh kind of a medium hardness and uh some of this i'm going to actually go back over and use that other lathe my lathe is just really struggling with that you know having to take some really small cuts and you probably can hear the squealing that's the vibration uh, from that lathe and the uh, boring bar I was using there. But anyway, so Travis is working the plasma table and we just set up a jig here uh, with some C channel and a, and a stop block to be able to square this thing back up. And as long as we didn't, you know, do anything with the gantry or the torch or anything, uh, it was just, you know, swap it out, cycle start, you know, let it cut the series of holes. And, uh, you know, we, we did some checking on both sides to, to kind of eyeball the alignment. Uh, and, you know, when these things have a 1 16th clearance or a 1 16th uh, tolerance on them. So, you know, there's there's plenty of room. If you think of like a engine hoist, you know, how much room is, how much slop you have in that pin that goes across. You know, um, so those pins don't really carry any weight. They're just you know, mainly kept from, you know, keep the thing from moving once you get it adjusted where you need it. So anyway, uh, we were kind of going wide open for, for a couple of days. So, uh, on those chrome plated rods, you see me here, uh, putting a center hole through it. I, I was able to get a center hole through it on the lathe, um, with a pilot. But then when I tried to push a one and a quarter inch drill bit, uh, drill through it, my little lathe just wouldn't do it. It, it just, uh, you know would bog down if, if I slowed it down enough to you know kind of in the 300 rpm range to push that one inch drill bit which is kind of what the rpm needed there it just would bog down so I, I came over and used my uh, mill here and it had no problem at all pushing it through and uh, so I pushed a one and a quarter inch drill bit through it and then it needed uh, I'm sorry one and an eighth drill bit and then it needed to be one and a quarter and so I took it back over on the lathe and bored it out the rest of the way to get it on the size it needed to be. So um, again, the same thing on that. I had a 1 16th tolerance on that, which is, you know, on machine parts is, is easily doable. So, and then uh, here's Travis uh, using the bandsaw. There was a lot of little uh, small miscellaneous parts here that we had to cut out, just uh, various little tubes and spacers and uh some other little uh solid shafts and and things that that made up that uh jib crane it was a really complicated design there on that jib crane it seemed to be way more complicated than than probably what it needed to be but um anyway and then here's just kind of a final shot just showing 
some of the other pieces that I had had actually cut uh, before Travis got here on Monday. I cut these out over the weekend, some some miscellaneous brackets and gussets and lifting lugs and 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 so forth that go with these with these parts. So we're not doing any of the fab work. This this company locally uh, has several welders and fabricators, and and they're doing all the fab and uh, so forth themselves. But anyway, guys, just a short video showing some of the action that we got going on here. And uh, appreciate you watching. Any questions, leave a comment, and I'll see you soon.